before college, before Campus Compact, what were your attitudes about being involved in civic life? What were your attitudes about politics? I thought politics was like the president. <laughs> That's as f uh, just direct directly related to government. That's basically as far as my understanding went. So before college, I I didn't have any. I guess I always had an interest in finding out what was beyond what I knew, but I never knew anything about politics. So and then there wasn't a lot of curiosity. Either. I guess not enough to make me go try to learn about it on my own. Uh -huh. So not. I would say not really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't like politics at all. Well, I still don't. The reason that I started off not liking politics is because of things that were going on in Mexico and my mom is so disgusted by the politics in Mexico and how she grew up and and um, the corruptness and everything. That's what why I grew up in Mexico, like just being like, ugh, like I don't even want to get into this, you know. Actually I remember voting, my first voting was in elementary school. I know it wasn't worth much, but um, we voted each year and we had fake ballots and everything, but um, I think one thing that's key for me that always kind of like pushed me to seek to be um, politically aware or have a social conscious is that my family always pushed me to understand where, what they fought for, what their parents fought for in order for me to be able to get where I'm at now. So I've always had that sense of drive to, to value the fact that people um, marched and people cried and people died. I don't want to be that one person that put down the ball. Have any of you reached out to a politician, been part of a demonstration? <laughs> of course. <laughs> My politicians know me by first name. <laughs> a lot of them don't like me. <laughs> I would say I was actually more politically active prior to college. I was definitely the type of person that would, you know, be a little bit more like Mike. Um, you know, actually make the phone call, write the letter. And I, for me, it was just there was an element of discouragement, frustration. And so <clears throat> I would say probably by like my sophomore year in high school, I just kind of had started to dwindle away and just find that <clears throat> there were other outlets that I could go to that I felt were a lot more successful actually participating more myself and being a part of groups that were doing things rather than just writing a letter. Instead of going into politics, I decided to, like when I was younger, we did a lot of volunteer work and um, when we lived in Mexico, I would go um, speak to the kids at the school in English and uh, when we moved here, just different like volunteer days and stuff like that. And that's how I felt that I was kind of getting into what I wanted to do like Julia said, you feel like you actually do something, whereas if you try to go this other route, you feel like you just keep running into a brick wall. So, um, but I think because, because things are the way they are, and because it is so disgusting, that that's what drives me more to learn more about it and, and try to change it. I think he, she touched on something at least in Jackie and mine's situation, we've lived through experiences that have put us on, at odds with the system. Her being a Mexican-American, Mexican myself aging out of the foster care system, we understand what it's like to be the people that get kind of left out of the draw. You know, you have to fend for yourself. And the best politicians in the world have been the people that have had to eat bologna and ramen noodles growing up. I'm actually, I, I come from a very, very different place than both of you. Um, I, my family personally never faced any challenges at all, but it would have to be just because of the values that were instilled in me. Like, it's our job to do this, kind of. I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable knowing that I could do something and then and still not do it. I mean, what, I mean, it's a waste of it's a waste of somebody's life. You, know, you come up with these grand ideas in your head, and you're like, "Oh, they'll just materialize." <laughs> but then you find that the university situation is um, is an incredible bureaucracy, and there's a lot of red tape, and um, not working out. People don't show up, and you just you just oh. I always have this feeling like that when I'm trying to talk to, especially somebody older, that they're just like brushing me off like, oh, this, you know, 
I don't know. It just feels like that. I don't know if I'm right. But I feel like if I would have been maybe like a man or older or, you know, somebody outside of the um, university, that I it would have been taken more seriously. Um, a lot of times I was kind of going around who I was. I was more telling them what office I was from rather than being a student. And I think, too, I would agree, no offense to you, Mike, or anything, but I would see that, you know, if I was a man, mm -hmm. that walking into a lot of the situations, I mean, even you can tell by people's body language, you know, as I would walk into the room that, you know, they do the, the side move, and it was just like, okay, yeah, whatever. You know? <laughs> I know exactly why you're doing that. Yeah. I had never tried to raise money for anything before, and I felt dumb. Like, I didn't know, like, how to do it. And frustration with... Uh, a certain politician, she was like an hour late, and you know, it's like. <sighs> and apathy on our campus isn't a shock either because most of the kids that I know that I go to school with are, well, my mom is buying me a car because I just wrecked it, or, you know, I need clothes, so I'm going to call my mom. And it's not the situation for people on the other side of that. So you have all these experiences and you've, you've had all this frustration. What is it, does it make you? less inclined to to fight the power? Does it make you feel like, well, I did it before, I can do it again? Every single person is capable of unbelievable uh, potential. It's just a matter of tapping into that innate. It's already there, but not everyone is aware that they have it and not everyone taps into it. Your salvation does not lie in just you and that you cannot truly be happy if you're not dedicating your life to making other people happy. And that's where civic engagement became abundantly clear that this is what I need to do. I still think that I can change the world. Everyone knows that I'm very passionate about nonprofits. And I believe that one nonprofit can give seed to something else that can give seed to something else and give seed to something else and to me that's how I plan to change the world because I hope to be the foundation and the roots of something that will branch out to really empower the world. You said I talk about men too much. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I love men. I want to see T.W. Hansen in the credits on television. That's what I want out of this documentary. There's no way he would be coming over my house for dinner. Not happen. It's just like, the peas stink, you know? I mean, nobody wants to eat the peas. <laughs> I keep, like, inviting them. Like, I'm going to come to the office again.